Asia, uh, and that's a that's a challenge, a challenging environment to operate buses in. Um, being quite honest, it's not something where we've made uh, as much progress as I would have liked to have done um, within the alliance, and that approach that we're taking around the corridors is a new attempt, if you like, to really start to tackle that problem because you're absolutely right, you can have the best bus driver, the best bus service with bells and whistles on, but if it's not running on time and it takes too long to get to where you want to go, then you're not going to use it. So it, it's, a, it's a critical factor in the delivery of bus service and one that we need to, uh, we need to tackle. I've got Jerry and then Margie. Okay. Thanks, Liam. Yeah, again, it goes back to the sorry, your chestnuts of paying on buses, and you know, we're all just really you know, badly affected. And it was that, I got, we were talking about it before. I mean, uh, literally a day, as you say, after our meeting, and all hell breaks, breaks loose in relation to uh, the buses. And the route that was really badly affected, the route more than any that we all south of general, we all come to view um, to many, it was 16 and 17. It's uh, all been right across the middle, so it's all the schools, it's uh, was two hospitals. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, they, they had a, a, a visit to the uh, hospital the Monday following, and had to pay the lady, you know, there was a pension, and she had to pay 18 pounds in tax to get over there. And uh, I mean, again, we know it's new regulation. And the, public, the problem is as well, you know, sometimes the general public you know, don't understand the regulation either for the fact that, that you know, it's a two common place, or it's like for life and all the other issues, you know, relating to uh, you know, the bidding the bidding process and everything. It's just hard to explain that people are really angry about, you know, uh, what's happened and um, affected the issue of notice. But again, it's just to highlight the real impact it had on the will really devastating, you know, absolutely devastating. I'm going to the new routes, particularly that 16, 17. Thank you. Molly? Um, my question is just about the Alliance and uh, in discussions with the Alliance, will they re-look at the amount of uh, routes that were taken off in Nelsley because when you look at the amount of buses and services that went, it doesn't seem equitable in the whole network of things. Okay, so um, through the through the alliance, I'm kind of with, with the with the operators, and it actually it's actually a wider point than, than just uh, the alliance. We've obviously been through the, a process of network reviews, bus network reviews, which has taken into account every area within. Our responsibility, which is the, the five Merseyside and um, the districts, that's had kind of two aims really. One is to make sure that the network kind of makes the links that it needs to, and to make sure that as far as possible, people have access to the bus network. You now, it might not be perfect access, but it's access at least to some of the, the basic amenities and to be able to kind of connect maybe to the wider uh, network. So that's. That's one of the objectives of that. Well, the other is a little bit more of a straightforward objective that we have a lot of financial challenges that we need to deal with, and we needed to take some of the resource out of the uh, out of the supporting bus network. We've been able to do that and do that with by with, with mitigating, if you like, as far as we can be able to do. Not, <laughs> not eliminating by by any means, but reducing the impact on people by working in cooperation with the operators. So. Certainly, and those is a very good example actually of where a bus op commercial bus operator has worked with us to commercialise a lot of what were previous uh, supported um, bus routes. That's not happened in every district, so uh, but it, it has happened uh, to a, a good extent in in Nosley. So we're we're, we're aware of uh, of kind of lots of the if you like my new. Uh, my new shy, if you like, with the um, with the network reviews, um, we're aware of some of the impacts. I think we've managed to deliver a network review that's not, uh, or a series of network reviews that hasn't isolated anyone from uh, from from the bus network. Although 
if you're going to take out the level of resource that we've had to take out as an authority out of that network, it is going to have some impact on people. Yes. Uh, thank you. No, uh, the officers answered the question up on that, but thank you. Okay. Is there any more questions or comments? Paul? Thanks, Chair. Uh, yeah, thanks, Matt, for uh, the report. Similar to, to Steve, we do welcome the, the protocol regarding bus service changes, but just a couple of points on this. And really, it's, do you think it, it really emphasizes too much online questionnaires? Whereas we know a lot of our customers won't necessarily be IT literate. And also in terms of uh, political stakeholder engagement, I see that we're at stage five, is it? Should what, we not be at stage one? Do you not think that would be helpful? Just let me get it on my screen so I can see which stage you're at. In terms of the process, um, I, I, as I understand it, I think one of, one of the first things actually that we do is come and speak with stakeholders. So I think we're, we're very conscious of uh, the fact that you represent people and that when we go out to speak to those people about what bus service changes might happen, you need to kind of be armed with the information to be able to, uh, to fit, kind of field the questions that, um, that you're going to get. So, um, I think that I think what you're referring to might be a kind of a repeat of an of earlier stage in the process, so we kind of come back to you with uh, further information. And in terms of the emphasis on online questionnaires, is there any comment in relation to that? Yeah, I, I think online is, is really important, and it's something that we can do quickly. Um, I, I, we are conscious that that's not the only way pe in which people wish to. Uh, wish to give feedback, and I think there are alternative ways of, of being able to uh, to do that built into the process as well. But online is important, and we do get a really strong response rate online. It gives us a, a good wealth of information, so it's not something I'd want to rule out of the process either. I think that raises some very good points, Paul. Um, so I can honestly say, in terms of the first two times we're going to trial this, uh, one is on the Wirral. Uh, and another's a route in Liverpool. Uh, actually, the people who sat down first and foremost was Ron Abbey in the Wirral, uh, as that first initial political stakeholder that ran out to others, and Steve Mumby, whose accounts were affected in Liverpool. Um, and both of those are also not just going to involve online surveys, but involve surveys on the bus with literally kind of a tip sheet and the kind of feedback sheet that people can do. So I think you raised some really good points, we perhaps need to sort of be a bit clearer the wording in the protocol, just so that's highlighted. Okay. Anything else? Uh, if not, if I can move um, paragraph two um, in the report to the recommendation, that's great. Because I think it's serious that there's an exceptional amount of work going in there, uh, and the you know, kind of uh, a seven page front ended report can do justice for all the work that I know, so I sit behind that. Okay, moving on to item 9, we've got public question time, and we've got a couple of questions from Mr. Andrew Wendell. So, Mr. Wendell, do you want to come forward and ask your first question, and then we'll respond, and then ask your second question. Okay, so the first question is about the Bus Or whatever might need to be investigated in terms of overcrowding, 
and uh, if people are sort of suggesting sitting on wheelchair users' lap, well, that's completely unacceptable. So we also need to make sure that we're investigating and dealing with that as well. The second part is, it, it happened back, I think, in the second of September, when they put me in with part of the group, say 1217. It, during the evening on Sunday, it goes fully down Nosey Lane, and it's covered off the, some of the 89 route around Highton. Um, so they beat them to the 2178. The electronic form, so obviously on the internet stuff, it comes up and says 2178. When the bus turns up, it still says 2178 on the front. So why can't they organise the, the electronic destination board to replicate what's got online? Yeah, we'll get you the proper detailed response, but <coughs> absolutely, that's just the basics of running the bus service. Uh, the, the, the actual bus has to show the correct number on the front. Uh, so we will be raising that according to the operator to make sure that we can okay. sort that out. Thanks so much for your yeah. questions. Yeah. Okay, item 10, petitions and statements, we haven't received any this time. And item 11, any urgent AOB approved by the chair? Not that night, then. So, we close the meeting. Thank you for attending. So, we look forward to seeing you at the summer's meeting. Thank you.